Brooks and for Quinnipiac, this is quite a change. We mentioned the absence of Usman Prime because of the knee injury. And so that means the first career start for James Ford Jr. This Quinnipiac team has started the same five every game this season until tonight. So it's Umar Shannon, Zaire Hurst, Jack Shannon, Ike Azatam, and James Ford Jr. His first start. Iona goes with English Bowman, Armand, Isaiah Williams, and Mike Poole. Time to take a look at the coaching matchup brought to you by Anaconda Sports, home of the Rock. And Berman underway, Rob. And the one thing that we are certain of is that Iona is going to come out with more energy than the first time when these two teams met. That was earlier this month up in Hamden, Connecticut, when Quinnipiac ambushed the Gales, raced out to the early lead in that game that actually grew to as large as 31 10. Quinnipiac hit 11 of its first 12 shots in that game. Armand taking the first shot here. And Poole runs down the rebound. The transfer out of Rutgers has it in the corner. Feeds it for Armand. Gets knocked away but kept alive. And Poole looking to give up. Armand sees an opening. And Iona does have the first two tonight. He's such a great three-point shooter that teams have been hanging all over him out at the three-point line. He's done a good job of getting the rid of the basketball and getting his teammates involved when guys run at him but he's got to find some finishes at the rim this is a very new series as far as the history is concerned Quinnipiac and Iona meeting for only the third time and the cross-court pass is taken away by Armand and a nice hesitation as he makes it four nothing he has all four early points for Iona tough finish in traffic after a good steal they get up into the full court pressure Quinnipiac a little sloppy handling that track. So Quinnipiac jumped out to the early lead first time against Iona. And this time the roles are reversed. And James Ford Jr. may be feeling a little bit of nerves early on. Well, you said they'd come out with more energy. Well, they certainly did. That was one of the keys for Tim Kloos. You mentioned getting ambushed up in Hamden by Quinnipiac. They trailed that game at the half by 22. And were down by as many as 28 points. Never really had a chance in that ball game. Yeah, Tim was very upset with the, the overall effort. The Gales actually made a comeback in the second half, but they were in much too deep a hole to have any realistic chance of winning that game. That time, Armand has his shot deflected away, and now Quinnipiac tries to get its bearings here, looking for his first points, and a three-pointer put up and missed by Shaq Shannon, and a loose ball foul is going to be called. Well, Iona likes to get up in full court pressure because they like to force some steals and get out in transition. But here's this nice drive and finish by Armand. Here's the steal we were talking about. Cross court pass, a little sloppy, and a nice finish in traffic by Armand. That's Umar Shannon. Two Shannons on the floor for Quinnipiac. There is uh, no relation between the two. Umar comes to this program for only one year. He's a transfer out of St. Francis, Pennsylvania. And he's made an immediate impact. The one thing that they really struggled with last year is shooting the basketball. And Umar Shannon has certainly solved that for him. Zaire Hurst driving the lane. Foul is indicated. Iona thought there was a tie-up. And A.J. English picks up his first foul and two against the team. Sean Armand also picked up an earlier foul. Now Quinnipiac will inbound from the baseline. The Bobcats playing game one. It will be a two-game swing down here in the New York City area as Ike Azatam gets them on the board for 2 Iona. He's their leading scorer and rebounder. Averages a double-double. English gets the play call and throws it over for Williams. Trey Bowman's been hot for Iona as they work it for Poole. Foot on the line. Shot doesn't go down. And it stays at the Iona end. And already we've seen an offensive rebound by the Gales and another extra possession there even though they didn't gather the rebound. They keep control. So already feeling the effects of not having Drame out on the floor for Quinnipiac. Armand the bounce underneath for English and it is poked loose by a hustling Shaq Shannon. Tom Moore right now in playing the age-old 
sports axiom of next man up. He has started the same five all season until tonight. Luis Mondrame, by the way, had an MRI on what is an injured right knee, and they expect him to miss one to two weeks. Yeah, Tom Moore said initially they thought it was going to be longer, so they're hoping they may have caught a break. Armand lost the handle, but Iona keeps possession as Ingles pulls up off the glass, rattles out, first the rebound. And that's an open look for Umar Shannon. Quinnipiac, as we mentioned earlier, hit 11 of its first 12 shots when they first played Iona. Tonight, not as quick a start. And right there, it is Trey Bolton. We mentioned he's had the hot hand, and he adds to this Iona lead. And that's where they'll kill you, that quick sprint up the floor and a quick shot. You've got to go find them in transition, especially out at the three-point line. So the Gales by five early here in the first half. The winner of this game will emerge with a share of the conference lead. Both of these teams, 6-2, and two, and Kinesis is 7-2 and two, as a Tam. Nice move in the post. And they don't have an answer for him defensively inside. A smaller lineup for the Gales. They're going to take advantage. Can't blink when Iona's playing. They run the floor about as well as any team in the country. Yeah, miss or make, they're coming right at you. Iona by five. That is Ford, who made the start tonight in place of the injured Usman Drame. Drame averaging 12 and a half points and just under 10 rebounds a game. So he's close to averaging a double-double, and that's on the bench tonight. That shot by Shaq Shannon, way off the mark. Here comes Iona, English, right down the lane. Would have counted, had it drop. We'll check the Quinnipiac foul. When we come out of this timeout, Iona shoots the three. English on the line was fouled by James Ford, shooting two. Very, very early in this game, Rob, to look at this stat, but it bears watching. So far, Iona in this game has out-rebounded Quinnipiac, and perhaps one of the reasons they're off to the quick start, you just saw Usman Drame on the bench. You see Drame there injured his knee in practice, and it was a non-contact situation, Rob. They say he was just maybe walking or jogging the floor, and almost out of nowhere, his knee kind of gave out on him. So as you said, next man up, one of those guys that's going to see more minutes is Conti with a nice finish. But don't blink, because here comes Iona to the other end. And after Conte made the basket for Quinnipiac. Well, Conte, a guy who scored nearly nine a game last year. His number's way down this year with the transfer of Umar Shannon. But uh, here's an opportunity where he's going to see some more playing time. Isaiah Williams tries that three. Long rebound. English grabbed it, and then Hurst took it away. Quinnipiac. At the other end with Hurst. Azatam's a beast on the board, but then he had a shot denied inside by Poole. Here comes Iona to the other end, and Bowman lets it fly. Loose ball foul. As you said, the big guy, Ike Azatam, is a beast inside, leads the country in offensive rebounds. You see right there, but a good job defensively to recover and make sure that offensive rebound did turn into second chance points. That foul was on Sean Armand, by the way. That's two on him. And when you see Azatam, when you see a guy that averages over 11 rebounds per game, you almost think he's going to be bigger. He's a bit undersized, but he does a great job of establishing inside rebounding position. A little old school a la Paul Silas. Conti kicks it out for Ford. That spins in and out. Iona working with the five-point lead. Poole dribbling, spinning. Nice move. The arcing shot goes down. Nicely done. Yeah, Mike Poole, the Rutgers transfer. He's had quiet numbers. I think some people thought maybe he'd put up bigger numbers after having a decent first three years for the Scarlet Knights. As a 10. Contact. They play on. Shot spun out. Belongs to Iona. And they get the first 35 as that ball did hit the rim. Ford checks out and Sim Chandler, the freshman guard, 
Now to Newark, New Jersey, not far from where we are tonight, New Rochelle, New York. Quinnipiac is playing the New York weekend for the first time in its young Mac history. They'll play Manhattan on Sunday. As a 10, back to the basket. Nice kick out for Chandler. And Bowman gives up for English. Here's Poole on the wing. He scored the last two in this game for Iona. David Laurie in there for the first time. And Lowry misses his first shot. He's come off the bench the last couple. That doesn't go down for Hurst. Tim Flew's saying he wants a little bit more intensity and energy out of Lowry early in the games. And here he is being aggressive, but it's not going down right yeah, now. Aggressive each of the first two times, though he caught the basketball. Maybe that's a good sign. Conti, the kick out pass. Shannon, Umar Shannon. It doesn't go, and then Ike Azatan owns another offensive rebound. What he does, he just wears you down because he gets after it on the offensive glass every possession. Fouls on pool, and Azatan will go to the line. We talked about his numbers. Averages a double-double, 16.4, and you see the field goal percentage is solid. And he averages 11.4 rebounds a game. He is the leading rebounder in the MAC, And uh, his, his offensive rebounding average is astonishing. Yeah, over five a game, best in the country. Like I said, you know, they list him at 6'7". That might be slightly generous. But what he does is he just works so hard. And it's a concerted effort. It's not by chance that they're one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Tom Moore, longtime assistant to... Jim Calhoun and UConn always prided themselves in their rebounding ability. They work on it in practice, and you don't see a whole lot of teams work on rebounding technique as well as just getting after the basketball. Yeah, and uh, Tom says, you know, a coaching staff worries about that in a way as English misses the three because, of course, there's always the threat of injury. But it's the identity of their program. And yes. when you establish an identity, when you look at these two teams, you know what they're about. With Quinnipiac, it's about man-to-man -man defense and rebounding the basketball. With Iona, it's about offense. Getting the basketball up the floor, sharing it, passing the basketball. And so when you are recruited to play, you know what the system's going to be like. And I think that really helps teams when you have an identity. A foul, by the way, on Williams. Chandler tries to dish, ball knocked away, Williams up court pass, threw it away. Looking for Bowman, but Umar Shannon playing the role of free safety got back and then hits the two, foot on the line, three-point game. And that's the biggest difference between last year when they struggled and this year when they're playing well. His ability to keep defenses honest has made a huge impact. Some contact down low away from the ball, Paul Thea stops things as... Lowry was getting involved with new big in the game for Quinnipiac, A.J. Sumbry. As we said, Umar Shannon, the first-year transfer from St. Francis, PA, and he graduated, so he was able to transfer and be able to play immediately this year. And, boy, has that been a godsend for Tom Moore and Quinnipiac. Moore says that Umar Shannon is exactly what they needed this year. Lowry misses, and then following up with a spectacular dunk is Isaiah Williams. Now you can see his athleticism and length. He missed five games. They were one and four during that stretch. With him in the lineup, they're eight and four. So he makes a big impact for the Gales. Who lead it now by five. Conti, tough shot. And leading by five, here comes Iona pushing. Deshaun Gomez, backup point guard in the game right now as he gives up for English. Not going down for him right now. And then Ford comes away with it. Chandler driving, throwing it out for Shannon. That's a three. Lowry pulls down the rebound. And he Gomez made it as waits for his teammates. He made it a tougher three because he wasn't ready to catch and shoot. Lowry spins away. Threads the needle and the rejection underneath. But after the rejection by Sumbry, the basket is good. And now when we come back, it'll be a possible three-point play coming up for Bowman 
and for the Gales. 11-12 to go. We're almost midway through this first half. This Iona. Well, again, we uh, say it's very early in this game, Rob, but so far Iona is out rebounding Quinnipiac 15 to 10. And why is that notable? Quinnipiac has out rebounded its last 40. Nine opponents. Yeah, I mean, of all their rebounding stats, that may be the most eye-popping. 48 straight games, they have not been out-rebounded by an opponent. So far, Gale's doing it to them because of their six offensive rebounds. We said not only best in the back with that rebounding margin, but best in the country. First time these two teams met, Bobcats out-rebounded Iona by 23, nearly doubling them up in that category. Out rebounded them 50 to 27 back on January 6th. That was a lopsided win. 86 74 was the final, so that final margin didn't really indicate how one sided that game was. Bowman misses the free throw trying to complete the three point play, but Iona has a seven point lead. And if you are just joining us, one thing we should mention as we talk about Quinnipiac and its rebounding strength is that Usman. Drame is out tonight with an injury. Yeah, they miss his rebounding at nearly 10 a game, but his size as well at 6'9". This is a small Iona team. They really don't have a guy that can match up size-wise with him. Chandler gives it inside for Azatam. Missed it. Missed on the tip. Trey Bowman out of the pack. Sean Gomez. That pool had a mismatch, but they couldn't find him. Now they get the switch out as Umar Shannon goes guards the perimeter guy. That's English for Gomez. He'll line up for a three. English had to swat it away. A good hands defensively by Shaq Shannon. Now Kunipiak tries to get its footing in this game. They went wire to wire against Iona the first time they met a couple of weeks ago up in Connecticut. And from behind since the start tonight. Iona jumped out to a 4-0 lead. Azatam powering in off the hesitation. A lot of contact. Lowry looked like he got a good piece of Azatam. No look from Poole to Lowry. Nice job by both men. Poole to Lowry and the lead is 9 for Iona. And Poole's one of those guys who's a utility man. A guy that can do a little bit of everything. He's got good size but can still handle the basketball. Chandler will set up off of the screen out there by Azatan. And that's not really his game. A guy that's known more for getting into the lane struggles from beyond the three. A lot of long rebounds in this game so far. Azatan normally doesn't take it from out there. He's looking to give off. That is Shaq Shannon. Shot clock. Down at 12. Well, there's Chandler again trying the long-distance shot. They let him shoot her up. Yeah, sometimes there's a reason why you're wide open. Gomez, the senior out of Inglewood, California, will get the assist as Mike Poole scores again. And this run continues for Iona. It's eight unanswered for the Gales. And a team not known so much for their defense. They're doing a good job on this end of the floor as well. Not a good shot there by Umar Shannon. So it's a double-digit advantage for Iona. Contact as Poole was fouled on the floor. That'll be a non-shooting violation there as Shaq Shannon picks up the foul. We said that uh, Mike Poole can do a little bit of everything. You see it right there. The nice dish off for the easy layup at the rim by Lowry. And then good unselfish play and recognizing that Poole had a mismatch. Good job to dump it inside and take advantage of it. I saw Poole in a couple of games earlier this season for Iona, Rob, and he looks a lot more comfortable. And, of course, that's a natural progression. This is his yep. first and only year in the program. And sometimes it takes a while to jump into a different system. And Iona plays different. I mean, out of the rim, miss or make, it doesn't matter. Take it out of the net and run. How about that? Poole continues this run. He has the last four points of what's a 10-0 run right now for Iona. And as we mentioned, I think a lot of people thought maybe he was going to up his numbers that he had at Rutgers last year when he averaged a little over five points per game. Doing about the same here at Iona. Some people say, oh, what happened? He's a good player. 
but it's basically the same role that he had at Rutgers he's got here now. That's Zaire. Her shot did not come close. Gomez, good pass there for Bowman, and it creates the contact and the Quinnipiac foul, which will lead us to a timeout. Mike Poole's season high is 12 points. He had that for him in the Quinnipiac win over Iona, but tonight, Rob, the roles so far in this game have been reversed. And it's mostly because of the energy that the Gales have had from the start. Quinnipiac has not scored in about five minutes of this game. Look at the shooting discrepancy in this game, Rob. Oh, Quinnipiac just can't find a bucket. Only three players have scored so far for the Bobcats, and only one's got more than a deuce. English puts up the three. So now Quinnipiac tries to score for the first time in over five minutes, try to put a halt to a 10-0 Iona run. If you take away Isatam, his teammates right now struggling, just 2 of 15 from the floor. There's Isatam with the baseline jumper. Not normally what he does. Hurst ends the drought. Almost six minutes between points for Iona. I mean, Quinnipiac, and now Iona has the ball with the 23-12 lead, six and a half to go in the half. And that was one of the things that Tom Moore was worried about. Only having a, really a day and a half of practice to, uh, to try and get a flow without Drame on the floor. Shot clock actually under 10 for Iona. You don't see that often. Now Quinnipiac trying to get a run going here. They scored last time down. And Asatam is fouled from behind by Poole. Hey, hey, you see how far off the pace Quinnipiac is so far, Rod. We, we talk about them as being a great rebounding team because they're the best in the nation, but they can score as well, but not tonight. Yeah, no, struggling to, to finish off plays, but because they rebound so well, they're able to get out and transition. And they do a great job not allowing you to get second-chance points, so now they're able to get out and score in transition. But so far tonight, it's Siona that leads in the rebounding category, which could develop into a story in its own right. Shannon has it knocked away. That's Umar Shannon turning it over. And here is English coast to coast. And the reach-in foul is committed by A.J. Sumbry. Quick hands by English. And he knows how to finish. Yeah, and they all do. As soon as they get in transition, they're just thinking about one thing. Get to the rim. If somebody stops you, you give the basketball up. They share it so well in transition because they work on it every day in practice. You know, I thought one of the under-reported stories last year in the MAC, and it ended up being a moot point because Iona won the MAC championship, but when they were slumping last year, and Iona was a slumping team during the regular season before they got hot at the right time, A.J. English was out the um, latter part of the season with a broken wrist, and he was having a great rookie year. Yeah, three times rookie of the week. He would have been the MAC rookie of the year had he stayed healthy. And you're right, it took a while for them to adjust when he went out. This year he has been moved to the point guard position as Sumbry hits the straightaway jumper. And English has done a very good job adjusting to a position that is not his natural position. Well, speaking of natural, Sean Armand has hit three-pointers naturally his entire uh, Iona career. And he's got such great range. I mean, that was basically from the Quinnipiac bench. He may have been out of bounds when he let, let that one go. Nobody has hit more threes in the history of Iona basketball than Sean Armand. And he's just blowing that record away now with 303 on his career. Stevie Burt held that record at 262, so he's just blown that one away. Shannon answers with a three. That's Umar Shannon at the other end. Bob, I think it's really important that Quinnipiac figure out a way to stay within striking distance as they get to the locker room. These last four and a half minutes will be key. Low scoring first half so far for the Bobcats who are without one of their 
best players. Usman Drame, reigning Mac player of the week as Gomez misfires and not the shot you necessarily want there. Hurst aggressive. Has it rejected inside. Now they have the numbers, and that's English. But three on one, you got to get a better shot than a three. Conte had a good look, and that was a well-selected shot. Yeah, and his first three of the season, he was 0 for 13 coming in. Yep, he had been waiting all season long for that moment. Evan Conte hits the three, and on that foul at the other end, we'll head to a timeout. English getting ready to shoot the free throws. Winnipeg is in the penalty, and the Gales will be in the penalty on their next foul. This is a two-shot situation here for English. Who well, hasn't hit a shot tonight from the field. He's 0 for 6. And he's had an up-and-down season. He's, and he kind of reflects in a way that Iona has played this year. Yeah, he's had some ups, so two games of 30 or more, 27 against Quinnipiac the last two times these teams met. He was the only Iona player that night who did anything to talk about. That was a night that Iona wanted to forget as quickly as possible. And they've done that so far here tonight by so far taking an early lead and building on that lead. Under 10 to shoot. Shannon hopping down the lane, lost control of the ball, and last touch, Quinnipiac. It goes back to Iona, off the side of his head. And like I said, Iona, a team not known for their defense. They've done a good job. Obviously, Quinnipiac hasn't shot the ball well, but some of that's because of the defensive intensity we've seen from Iona. The Bobcats had 29% in this game. Iona by 10. Lowry looking to post up. Had the first shot denied, stayed with it very impressively, and he goes back to the free throw line, and it was almost a three-point play. I have to admit that Lowry at that time showed a lot of energy. Well, they're getting him a ball inside. He's aggressively attacking the rim, just unable to finish. Stayed with it long enough to get an opportunity from the line where he has just struggled this year. I mean, it, it has been an adventure. After shooting it pretty well from the line last year. You know, uh, you talk about how he was attacking the rim there, Rob. He was also attacking a player who doesn't have that much experience, but who will be counted on a little bit more. Marquise Barnett was the player trying to defend him, the junior out of the Bronx, as Lowry bricks both of those free throws. Yeah, he's shooting under 50% from the line this year. Looked it on both of those. And last year he shot it at 65%. So you know that's just mental. Azatam gives it off for Hurst. Azatam muscling into the lane. Bowman, good hand, slapped it away. But Umar Shannon recovers and spins and banks it through. They don't wait. Wow. I mean, they just come running at you. That's off a of make. They get up the floor as fast as anybody in the country. That's an unforced turnover right there. As Chandler threw a pass, and Umar Shannon had nobody on him, and it just slipped through his hands. You get no hero shots when you score against it. <laughs> Iona, right? You don't see a shot of the guy running back up the floor because if our cameras catch nope. it, they're going to miss a shot at the other end. That's a quick five on yep. four. Yep, and as well... On the offensive side, when you score it, you've got to be conscious to just score and run. Just sprint right back. Oh, beautifully done. Lowry spinning down the lane, flashing off of the screen, and a nice dish there from English, or Armand, I should say. And the lead is 10 for Iona. Old school pick and roll. Hurst answers quickly. This is a little bit more of the scoring pace that we thought we'd see. Well, late in the first half, it's been Iona since the start. 4 nothing lead, and they've kept on coming. And Hurst reaches in, and that was close. He is going to send English to the line to shoot a couple of free throws, but Hurst did get a lot of the ball on that one. A lot of ball, but a little body because he was in good defensive position. 
just needed to hold his position here. Sees he gets pretty much all ball, but as he slaps down, sometimes you get that whistle. We'll send English to the line. He had nine points last time out. That was a win against Siena last time Iona played was on Sunday, an 88-74 win over the Saints. And Rob, you mentioned that before that English had been on a real scoring tear, averaging 28 points over the three previous games. And hits a couple of free throws there. And the Gales by nine as we approach a minute to go here in half number one. Well, Quinnipiac is starting to get into an offensive flow. There's the quickness of Chandler. We saw him miss a couple of threes, as we said. That's not his game. Getting to the basket is. And now we'll have a chance to answer right back again as English took the quick three. And one thing with the Gales, the way that they play and try to play so fast, they'll keep you in the ball game. So even though you're down by nine, as we said, I thought it was really important that the Bobcats make a little run late in this first half so you get to the locker room and not have too big of a margin. They've done that. Let's see if they can finish it off here in the last minute of play. Chandler had a driving shot last time. Now the pull-up jumper. That was a good look from the free throw line and didn't go down. And now Tim Kloos will call. His use it or lose it time seasons for the Scarlet Knights. This will be his first and only year at Iona. Now the Gales with a difference of nine seconds shot clock to game clock as we wind it down here in the half close to a backcourt violation. Bowman did a nice job keeping that in for English and now the shot clock He's down to 12. Yeah, neither coach able to get what they wanted out of their timeout. It's English driving, denied by Azatan, but Lowry to clean it up. Now, good job by Lowry to make his presence felt on the offensive board. Gales it, held their own on the backboards. Shannon drives, doesn't go. Lowry tips it out to English and chucks one up as the buzzer sounds. And we head to halftime. And to win the MAC championship and those teams I just mentioned with the exception of Niagara this is a transition year under their first year head coach Chris Casey but Canisius and Manhattan and Iona all certainly players when it comes to championship aspirations in the MAC this year and Quinnipiac right in that conversation as well and now they try to get right back into this game they have the first possession trailing Iona by nine just joining us, big story before the game, the injury to Usman Brame, a practice injury to the outstanding Quinnipiac big man, James Ford, got the start in his place tonight. That's the second time that Shannon's had an open three and has made it more difficult by putting the ball to the floor. That's Shaq Shannon who comes away with it. Two Shannons on the floor for the Bobcats, not related. That pass caught by Ford on the sideline the kind of turnover you like to commit, especially when you're trying to put together a comeback. That's Tom Moore, seventh year as the head coach at Quinnipiac. A.J. English, 4-3 Bowman. English in trouble uh, getting his offensive game going here so far tonight. That's Poole. Armand, best three-point shooter in Iona history, hands to the legacy. And that's a defensive mistake by Hurst. You can never help off of Armand. you got to hug him out at the three-point line. Well, Iona has the first bucket of the second half, so they extend the lead back to double digits. They've led by as many as 14, up by 12 right now. Hurst had a great game the first time these two teams played, but tonight just four points. He had 23 last time they met earlier this month up in Hamden, Connecticut. Armand got bumped. Poole recovers. Shot puts it up and a little bit short on that attempt. Lamar Shannon sees daylight and hits, and he is fouled. 
Well, that's an opportunity for an old-fashioned three-point play, but when you talk about three-point shooters, none better in this conference than Sean Armand. So he said the all-time leader in Iona history, 304 now in his career. As we said, that's the new way to get three. Here's the old-fashioned way. Driving the ball to the basket and able to finish through contact. Free throw is good by Shannon. Those are the first points of the second half for the Bobcats. Quinnipiac comes in with a record of 11 and 6, 6 and 2 in the MAC. The Gales are a game above 500 overall at 9 and 8. Also 6 and 2 in the MAC. A little more than two minutes gone by here in half number two. Bowman straightaway three. Connie kept it alive for Shaq Shannon. As a Tam had to take it away, he was in a bad position when he caught it, but then he recovered. Nice touch. Hey, right guard put him in a tough position, but then uh, he was able to bail himself out, staying with the basketball long enough to get the finish. Well, the last five in this game belong to Quinnipiac as they try to come back. They have played from behind since the opening tip. And these two teams reverse roles when they played early this month it was Quinnipiac wire to wire Armand misses the three and the steal by Iona yeah Williams smartly realized he had an opportunity to get a hand on that's a three and that goes for AJ English his first make of the night after missing his first nine shots including his first four three-point attempts Comes at a good time for Iona. Quinnipiac had begun to generate a little momentum. Foul away from the ball. Two of the big men, Poole and Azatam, got involved down low. And you see before, Bowman handed off there for Poole. And English finally broke the seal. But a smart play right here by Williams, realizing he had an opportunity to get into the passing lane to disrupt the outlet pass. As we bring it back to live action, Iona gets it back, leading it by 10. Three and a half gone by in the second half. Lowry handing it off for English, who gives up for Bowman. Now, Lowry looking to take his man as a tap. And he's successful. Uh, he's been aggressive. They've gotten the basketball a lot in his hands. He's gotten good touches because he's been able to establish good post position. So it's Iona by a dozen. We're early here in the second half as Quinnipiac... Looked like they were going to put together a run, but the Gales have answered with five of their own. Azatam double team takes it right inside, gets denied. Well, he got back no good. about three times, but able to stay with it. A lot of contact in there. Well, he is just relentless. I think sometimes because he's so big and strong, the officials don't give him some calls there. That ball gets knocked out of bounds, and it'll stay at the Iona end when we come back. 15-20, sprint right back and get back into the play. Iona back-to-back -back years as the NCAA scoring champions, third in scoring this year. English in a tough position on that first attempt, stayed with it, and he scored on the second try. Pretty good when your point guard can take guys inside and finish tough shots in the block. That's Azatan driving, and it's going to be a blocking foul. What do you think of that? It could, could have easily been the other way. Yeah, but now, especially the way that uh, it's being called, you're going to get way more blocks than charges. Here's a good finish. As we said, here's your point guard battling, finding his own missed shot and being able to finish through contact. Yeah, he's been having a tough night from the field, but staying with it has been getting to the free throw line frequently in this game. And now Azatam, who we heard from at the half, Rob, you talked to him, and he admitted that 
It's a tough challenge being without his running mate, Usman Drame. Again, they play well off of each other. Drame a little different, a little longer. The lefty creates some match, mismatch problems for smaller teams. I own a relatively smaller team, and so certainly they miss not only his rebounding and scoring, but just his presence with his size on the floor. So a shot of Drame on the bench. Injured his knee in practice a couple of days ago. A non-contact injury. They hope to have him back after only a week or two. A.J. Inglis is starting to find the touch here in the second half. Iona has worked with a comfortable lead most of the way. Up by 12 with 14.35 to go here. On a Friday night from New Rochelle, Omar Shannon was fouled. Late whistle, but Shannon was knocked to the deck on that attempt as a graduate student transfer out of St. Francis, Pennsylvania. will get ready to shoot a couple of free throws. He comes off that dribble handoff, turns the corner. Lowry in good defensive position, but just a little bit too much contact down below. Lowry wondering about the call. Lowry picks up his first foul. Four on the team. Quinnipiac, no team fouls in the second half, uh, half so far. Shannon, good free throw shooter. There's another Shannon. Shaq Shannon checking back into the game. Replaced Evan Conti. Umar, good free throw shooter. Their top three-point specialist. And he hits a pair right there. Quinnipiac hanging around. Down by ten. Now by nine at the half. These teams six and two in the MAC. Lowry down low for English. Another late whistle. English is going to go back to the line. Jack Shannon gets called on the personal. Take a look, see if you agree. Well, nice feed inside, and again, using English not just to initiate offense, but to score inside. But. Uh, See the outside official about uh, 40 feet from the play blowing the whistle. You never like to see that when there's a guy standing right next to him. Mentioned English has had a tough night from the field, although he has picked it up here in the second half, but his point total is just fine. He's sitting on 14 after missing the first free throw. And the 79% free throw shooter makes one out of two. It's Iona by 11. Raid Hurst had 23 points, a career high the first time these two teams played. That was on January 6th in Connecticut. As a tan double team, try to throw out of it. Instead, backs over the dribble and threw it away. Bad decision. English to steal. Gives for Armand. Scoops it through, and he was fouled. Costly turnover could turn into three points now at the Iona end. You're right. Azatam was doubled initially. Here comes the second double. He can't find the open man. And the Gales able to transition it into a good finish at the other end by Armand. And Azatam compounding his problems as he also committed the foul. you got to give him credit for getting back, Rob. But maybe not a good decision there to reach in and give Armand the chance for the three-point play which he has this matches the largest lead of the game for Iona 51 37 a 14 point lead under 14 minutes to play a lot of whistles here in the second half Paul Thea has this call Sean Armand has just picked up his third Tom Moore trying to get some explanations from Doug Abrahamian Quinnipiac resets following the Armand foul. That's Umar Shannon. Iona is known as a scoring team for good reason as Hurst misses a three. But you know, Rob, they're doing a pretty good defensive job tonight. No, they are. And they're at times where they just outscore people. But today, their defense has been much better than we've seen throughout parts of the season. 
Isaiah Williams, one of many Iona Gales who can spot up and hit a three, extends the lead to its largest so far for Iona. They're up 17. They've got so many weapons and so many guys that can score the basketball, including Williams, who's now been back over the last four games. And as we said, they're 8-4 and four with them, 1-4 and four without. They leave Chandler alone once and, again. And that's a good idea. 3 of 23 coming in. 0 for 3 so far tonight. English tried to go coast to coast. And then in midair, there was contact as he was hit by Sombre. And English will go back to the line. And a timeout is going to be called here by Quinnipiac's Tom Morris. We'll take a break as well. Tom Morris here at Iona right now finds himself in 14th place closing in on that 1500 point mark here's another guy who by the time his Iona career is over up will be on those uh, short lists of great Iona players AJ English on the line to shoot too missing two English averaging close to 18 points a game this season Second leading scorer on this very potent Gales team, Armand averaging just under 19 per game. He is their top scorer. Iona by 17. Chandler, Omar Shannon, high arching shot blocked by English. And three times we've seen him pass up an open shot to create a guarded shot because he had to put the ball to the floor. Bowman will get credit for the hoop. Some fancy maneuvering there on the left side of the lane, Rob. And off of the hesitation, the Quinnipiac foul and the continuation, yeah. it gets credit for the bucket. Yeah, maybe in the old ABA, but uh, it seemed like that was, was a little bit early from the contact, but maybe not. You know what? I take it back. Just was slow developing. The foul came early, though, not Barnett. It came on Kasim Chandler and. Bowman does make it a three-point play. And right now, Iona stretching it out. Tim Kluse's team doing it at both ends of the floor. We said we always talk about their offense, so when they do play defense, which uh, at times some would say is not that often, we got to make sure we give it good props. As it's him, will go to the line to shoot the free throws. This is a Quinnipiac team that has not had a field goal in this game since the 15-38 mark. And they will go to the line here with Azatam. This Quinnipiac team is playing without Usman Drame. It certainly would be understandable if you looked at that as a, a deflating factor before this game began. You know, Tom Moore, I'm sure, looked at James Ford, who we inserted into the starting lineup tonight, and said, hey, you know what? You will miss a beat. You go out there and get the job done. But certainly, Drame's absence has had a uh, big effect tonight on the Bobcats. And talking to him earlier today, he was worried about what kind of offensive flow they would have because they didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare of not having Drame. As we said, basically a practice and a half without the big guy. So Azatam hit a couple, but it's still big, big hole right now for Quinnipiac. Lowry posting up Barnett. He tried against Barnett earlier in the game and beat him. Not this time. Conti facing that pressure. Almost threw it away, but got the pass to Hurst. This should be an easy two. Well, the foul is committed. Azatan went for the dunk. And now a technical foul as A.J. English was pushed away by Hurst. And they got Hurst on the technical. So, little... Extracurricular activity going on as Barnett's a big man, 260. So English sold it a little, but when a 260-pounder even gives you a love tap. But, yeah, but you knew he was selling it when all of a sudden he was smiling and <laughs> laughing once that T was called. Meanwhile, Azatam misses the first. And getting back to Tom Moore's remarks, he said what we're seeing right now, this is a Quinnipiac team that is not playing with any confidence right now. They're playing tentatively. Yeah, and, and, and as we said, it is a different lineup because they don't have the two bigs. 
Now here are the technical free throws for Armand as Barnett committed that technical on that tap of A.J. English and Armand with some both. Yep, dead ball contact, technical foul. So the two foul shots and the basketball for the Gales. So the lead is 19 for Iona. They got blown out in the first game between these two teams up in Hammond, Connecticut earlier this month. Armand, the rainbow three, thought he was fouled and came down touching nothing but air. Piak beat Iona by 12 the first time they met and first drives in for two. But that game was over at the half. 49-27, uh, Iona trailed. Reach and foul there on Lowry as Quinnipiac tries to get something going here. 10.55 remaining. And A.J. English with a quick trigger coming up the floor. And if you do that, then all of a sudden you start creating extra possessions. Tim Plus's team wants to play fast, but they also want to play smart. That was not a smart shot at the other end. Well, here's our friend Marquise Barnett, the six foot eight junior out of the Bronx, attended Cardoza High School. Mac Azatam taking a break, a break and Tom Moore talking about playing with the four guards and the big, and they will probably have to do that for at least two games, and they hope no more than two. Moore is hopeful that they'll have. Who's Mondrame back for the home game against Canisius? But that may be wishful thinking. Yeah, and, and they've been healthy all season long. Obviously, Drame unable to play, but Jack Shannon also unable to practice this week as he was bothered by tendonitis in his knee. And sometimes once you get into late January, middle of February, as the season wears on, those dog days of February, one of the things you're trying to do as a coach is keep your team fresh and keep them as injury-free as possible. Every coach talks about it, Rob. And often it's just a roll of the dice. But health has so much to do with success at this time of the year. Quinnipiac had started the same five all season long until tonight. Conti missed, and it goes back to Iona. But in case you're just joining us, Usman Drame of Quinnipiac. Get a look at him right there on the bench. He hurt his knee in practice this week. It's not a serious knee injury. He took an MRI, and they had feared he may be out for a while when he initially sustained the injury. But they got some good news on the MRI. Now they're optimistic that maybe he'll only miss a couple of games. This one and Sunday's game against Manhattan. Lowry, the jump hook in the lane, showing a nice touch. Yeah, showing a little bit of life, a little bounce there. They've doubled him a couple of times. He's such a good passer out of the post that uh, you got to be careful with that. And so he ends up with an isolation and is able to finish. Lowry coming off of the bench again. First had that shot altered. Lowry was defending. Trey Bowman finding Lowry. There's that passing ability out of the post. And Conti on the reach in will send Sean Armand to the line. See Connie picking up the foul and staying with uh, the Lowry thing as you look at Sean Armand. Talking to uh, Tim Kloos and was asking him about Lowry and why he has not started the last few games. And pretty simple answer, Rob. He wants to see more intensity at the start of games and in practice. He, he like most coaches, Tim Kloos, will start the players who are giving him maximum effort in practice as well as in games. And Lowry uh, leaving the game right now. Certainly has responded. Actually, no, he is uh, staying on the floor, walking to the other end. But uh, he certainly seems to be at high intensity tonight. Yeah, he's had a little bit more bounce to his step. Remember, this is a guy that was a third-team All-Mac pick last year after becoming eligible in December and was a preseason first-team pick. So he's had a bit of a disappointing season so far. But if he can play with the energy that we've seen at times tonight, uh, certainly I don't know be one of those teams to be reckoned with coming down the stretch. Evan Conti earlier tonight hit his first three of the season after 13 misses. And James Ford Jr. hits the three, his tenth of the season. He got the start tonight in place of the injured drama. Eh? 
Gales by 16, under nine to go. They will work a little with the clock, or maybe not. Williams with the quick trigger. Olympiak pushing, Conti for Ford, spotting up. Armand calling for the ball, the long pass to Armand off of the bounce. He had trouble controlling, but kept it alive for English. Oh, he got away with the walk, maybe, but uh, no matter what happened, it turned into a good play for the Gales. Almost a walk, almost a lost ball on the baseline, and then A.J. English makes it all pay off. So Iona cruising right now, leading by 19, getting close to eight minutes to go in the game, and here they come again. It's a three on two, and Bowman wanted to go up for the dunk, and he is going to get a couple of free throws as we hit the eight-minute mark. Might have had another technical foul called here. I didn't catch it, Rob. I'm not sure, but there was something going on there as uh, they indicated that foul. Here's the play earlier, which almost broke down a uh, near turnover, the near walk, and then the three-pointer. No technical foul, but I think talking to the teams now, a little frustration, a little chippiness earlier. And I think they're trying to get things in hand here. Well, I actually should have stuck with my first instinct. It took a while to sort it out and get it announced, but there's a double technical foul, Rob. There was a foul on the initial dunk attempt, and then Ford and A.J. English got yapping at each other and the officials stepping in right away. So here is Bowman on the line. So a 20 point game and the officials trying to make sure things don't get out of hand. Yep, trying to make sure that uh, both teams just play and don't worry about anything after the whistle. This is the first time that Quinnipiac has ever visited New Rochelle. This is only the third all-time meeting between these two clubs. They are, of course, new members as far as uh, MAC rivals are concerned. Quinnipiac first year in the MAC. Iona has been a charter member of the MAC. Azatam loses it. And ahead it goes to Bowman. Now they want a goaltending on Barnett. Quinnipiac to the other end with Azatam. That will count, and he will have a potential three-point play when we come back from break. Iona has knocked down six three-pointers in this game, and this was the most. Quinnipiac has the second-best assist-to-turnover ratio in the MAC. Iona is the assist to turnover ratio. Three assists for Quinnipiac on 12 turnovers so far. That's Ike Azatam on the line, making the free throw that completed the three-point play. And one of the things that always amazes me, Iona plays at a fast pace, but they don't turn the basketball over. A lot of teams that get up and down the floor, kick it all over the place. Just five turnovers so far tonight for the Gales. Fewest in the league, 10 per game. And again, that's for a team that gets up and down the floor. Sean Gomez in the game now. Well, that's the way to share the basketball. Look at that. Hot potato ends up in the right guy's hands. And what do you get? A good open three. I'll tell you what you get as well is a tape for the clinic. Yep. Show that one again. And that's why they, year after year, are in the top four or five teams in the country in assists. Led it two years ago behind the great play of Scott Machado. And once again near the nation's leaders this year. Shaq Shannon at the Quinnipiac uh, end. It's the three. 6.25 remaining. And Quinnipiac, which dominated Iona the first time these two teams met on the receiving end tonight. Now they're going to try and rely on the three-pointer here as they look to come back and off of that miss, Iona in no hurry. Exactly six minutes remaining.
Isaiah Williams lines one up. Armand the rebound, an offensive rebound, and he was fouled. Well, the rebounding totals in this game are proving to be part of the story, Rob. This is a Quinnipiac team. We've mentioned it over and over and has out-rebounded its last 49 opponents. But right now, it's Iona that leads in that particular category, which is a footnote to this game, but certainly significant in its own right. And as we said, Tom Moore, longtime assistant coach at UConn. The UConn great, Scott Burrell, seven-year career in the NBA, now an assistant coach for Tom Moore. He is the answer to a trivia question I have asked many times and no one has ever gotten. So here's your uh, public service for the night. Scott Burrell is the only player in the history of major professional sports to be drafted in the first round, baseball and NBA. No one else. Wow. He was a great, great high school pitcher in Hamden, Connecticut. Jack Shannon. This is that three. And that's an aggressive rebound by David Laurie. He, 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 that wasn't one on the floor. He got off the floor. He's had a lot more bounce to his step. That's a good sign for the Gales. Because if he can start playing up to his preseason billing as a first-team all-conference player, then they can really be a much different team coming down the stretch. Lowry's had a good game for Iona. Off of the bench again tonight. Shot clock was winding down. Armand put it up and had it blocked. And Shaq Shannon gives up for Hurst. That's a three for Zaire Hurst. Loses club. Over the last four plus years, Iona is 51 and 10 inside this Hind Center. And yeah, Tim Cluse as a head coach, 29 and 4 here at home. One of the reasons why the Gales have been so good under Cluse. It was a week ago tonight that Iona suffered its only Mac home loss. That was against Canisius. A terrific game, a two-point loss. In a battle of two teams right now that uh, find themselves atop the match standings. Friday night basketball continuing here tonight with the game against Quinnipiac. But you get a look at last week's Canisius victory over Iona. A.J. English with the big game. And we said a high-scoring affair. Billy Barron in the Griffs able to come away with a very important two-point road win here in a place that has been tough to win traditionally and historically and especially with Tim Plus on the sideline. Canisius is in first place at the moment, but Iona is on its way to matching them with a record of 7-2 and two in the MAC. Manhattan also has a chance tonight to pull into a tie with Canisius for the lead, but Canisius could have had a little bit more of a, a cushion, as you see Armand driving down the lane and scoring, but Canisius had a chance to have an even better MAC record, but they got burned by Mammoth earlier in the week. That shot will count. Shannon scores, and it'll be a possible three-point play. When we come back in two as well, and we would have a three-way tie at the top, and Quinnipiac plays Manhattan down at Riverdale on Sunday. And then next Friday, a much-anticipated matchup of what is considered one of the better rivalries in the MAC as Iona and Manhattan will meet in the game on ESPNU on next Friday night. By the way, that last foul that sent Umar Shannon to the line was committed by David Lowry, so he is done for the night. That was his fifth foul of the night, so Tim Kloos goes the rest of the way without Lowry, but his team has the comfortable lead, and Umar Shannon, who completed the conventional three-point play at one end, gives up this foul at the other end that puts Trey Bowman on the line. Bowman at 25 points last time out against Siena. He has been on a real good scoring roll for them. A little quieter here tonight, but they haven't needed his scoring. A 
Shannon. Shaq Shannon sneaking in. Quinnipiac sets up the full court press. Iona handles it. And then the foul is given up by Azatan. Inside three minutes to go, and the Gales looking to cruise home with what would be their 10th win of the season against just eight losses overall. Azatan, as we said, on the foul, and he has played tonight without his running mate, Usman Drane, out at least a couple of games with a knee injury. First by Bowman is good. Bowman began his career at Penn State. Second year with the Gales. Quinnipiac trying to answer back here late in the game. That's James Ford with the three. So it's the Gales by 15. And a travel there by Poole as we take a look at our Pepsi Max slam of the game. And the man who wears number one for Iona with one heck of a slam there. Isaiah Williams powering it through our Pepsi Max slam of the game. And appropriately it was on an offensive rebound because one of the big stats coming in was going to be how the Gales could hang on and hold up on the backboards. Not only is Quinnipiac the best rebounding team in the MAC, best rebounding team in the country, but the Gales are the worst rebounding team in the MAC. They come in having been out rebounded by their opponents by an average of seven a game. Even in their nice win against Siena last time out, they got out rebounded by 19. So certainly the fact that they've been able to not only hold their own on the boards, but actually win the battle of the boards, one of the reasons why they've got the comfortable lead. And Bowman on the line to shoot a couple after being fouled by Trey, uh, by Hurst, and he makes them both. And the Gales, who average 83 points a game, on their way to at least 83 in this one. Umar Shannon way off on that three-point attempt. A lot of whistles down the stretch here. James Ford got the start tonight in place of Drame. Picks up the foul with 2.27 remaining. Both teams in the double bonus penalty. So a lot of free throws to close this game out. And it's Mike Poole who started this game quickly. Had eight fast points. And as I said earlier, Rob, first and only year here with Iona. And takes a while to assimilate. And it certainly appears tonight as if Poole has reached that point in the season where he's very comfortable with his basketball surroundings. Yeah, and he was one of the guys that gave him good energy at the start of the game. He started the last nine games for the Gales. Had that big first half with the quick eight points, as you said before, Bob, and those are his first two points of the second half. Well, Quinnipiac will try to uh, recover but it won't be easy as Tom Moore going into this weekend said, trying to put the big boy pants on. Bowman is on his way to the line again. Because after this game here tonight in New Rochelle, Quinnipiac goes right down the road into the Bronx and they will take on Manhattan on Sunday. And certainly he would like to have one of his big guys wearing those big boy pants you're talking about. Usman Drame out tonight and expected to be out the next couple of games in this tough three-game stretch when they're going head-to-head -head with the top three teams in the mat. Quite a stretch and could be a uh, make or break point in the season for Quinnipiac as far as a, a regular season championship is concerned. A lot of whistles late in this game. The outcome no longer in doubt. Mac fans, the Mac is on Facebook. Make sure to like the Mac today. Looks like the officials are helping out to make sure we get every promo in here, <laughs> giving us plenty of whistles to get all of them in. <laughs> uh, the officials have done a great job all year. The freedom of movement has really been good, but uh, here's where it backfires a little bit late in the game. As now people start emptying out, uh, because as you get a parade to the foul line like this, it 
It's a game that had good pace, good flow the whole time. All of a sudden comes to a screeching halt here the last couple of minutes. Jack Shannon makes a couple. So, Rob, what does Tom Moore do to try and instill in his team some confidence they didn't seem to have? And I don't know if confidence is the right word, but he referred to what he thought was a lack of belief yep. in the lineup on the floor tonight. Well, the hardest thing is they don't have enough practice time here in the quick turnaround to maybe get that belief in. Uh, but they're going to have to figure out whether or not they can go with the four-guard lineup or whether, as he said, Maybe they go with a little bit more of a traditional lineup with two bigs on the floor. But as we said, just a quick one day of practice and really as much to get ready, walk through stuff for their upcoming opponent against Manhattan. So not a lot of time to get the flow that they certainly did not have offensively tonight. Saw some long faces there on the Quinnipiac bench. They've had a great first year here in the MAC. But they are going to be handed the lopsided loss tonight in New Rochelle. Shaq Shannon scored at their end and right down the other end of the floor. It's, it's Armand and Bowman hooking up. Now English falling down. And a travel will get us the 125 mark here as this game is crawling to the finish. A lot of fouls, a lot of turnovers, but no doubt about who's going to emerge the winner. This is the first time that Quinnipiac has ever visited this gymnasium. This is a tough place to win. Right now, not much resistance being put up at either end. Nope, and once again, Gale's over the 90-point mark. Iona already at 90 now and climbing. You look at those uh, Quinnipiac players, and they are facing the prospect here of being out-rebounded in a game for the first time since March of 2012. 49 straight games in which they have out-rebounded their opponents. But right now that mark stands in jeopardy. In fact, um, Iona is going to, barring something really crazy here in the final minute, they're going to win the rebounding total tonight. It stands at 45-37 in favor of Iona. That's one of the stories within the story, but really the big story for Quinnipiac was the loss of Usman Drame coming into this game, and quite clearly Tom Moore's team was affected by his absence. And the numbers, they took 12 and a half points and almost 10 rebounds per game to the bench with him after that injured knee, and you see him right there. Put him on the bench for at least the next couple of games. Well, that and a combination of Iona coming out and probably playing their best defensive game of the year. On uh, the night that the Gales have gotten the 90 points here, Rob, it is time to clear the bench. And that is Christian Durachevich, who gets very limited playing time. Gets a, a loud cheer here from the uh, fans who have stuck around. A lot of them are sticking around. Oh, they always like it when a senior walk-on is able to get a basket. Nice high-low action right here. They get him into the high post. Nice little back door, able to score it at the rim. Another big man, Ryden Hines, the freshman out of Anchorage, Alaska, who threw that pass down low that resulted in the basket for Durachevich. There's Evan Conti on the line right now for Quinnipiac. By the way, those are the first points in the history of Christian Durachevich's Iona career. As you said, Ravi, senior walk-on. It's always nice when those guys get a couple of points. So we count it down here in New Rochelle. Tavon Sledge gets in the scoring column. Oh, Quinnipiac 
laid the lumber on Iona the first time these two teams met, and Iona is returning the favor here tonight in New Rochelle. That basket by Conti will foul, and Durachevich, who scored his first career points a few moments ago, now has the foul that will send the New York City native Conti to the line. So Iona will improve to 10 and 8, 7 and 2 in the MAC. They move into a share of the conference lead. And even though they are close to 100 points, Rob, I think Tim Clouse will praise his defense and rebounding as much as the scoring in this one here tonight. As we said, probably their best defensive effort, I would think, on the season. Good, solid defensive effort right from the start when they came with good energy to start the game. Tim Clouse and his Iona.